Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Trump Tower. Uh, this has been an amazing month for the campaign and for Mr. Trump. So without further ado, the next President of the United States, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. This has been a great period of time. Uh, it's been really, as George said, amazing. We, uh, we've gotten the nomination. We're going, to have an, um, we're going to have an incredible period in Cleveland. We look forward to it. We've started working already on the convention. Uh, and LeBron, uh, good luck in the uh, series, because we're going to have a series, which, of course, the longer it goes, the less time we have, but that's okay. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. But as you know, they're pay playing the basketball championships partially in that arena. So uh, I think it'll be uh, very exciting. It'll add to the excitement in Cleveland, and that's good. That's what we want, because it's going to be an exciting period of time. Uh, we have uh, we've done some awfully good work. I was just informed, uh, was certified out, that we've got more votes than anybody in the history of the Republican primaries. And we still have, I guess, six or seven uh, locations to go, states to go. And in the history, think of it, in the history of this great party, we've gotten substantially more votes than anybody else, by millions, by many millions more than anybody who's ever run. So that's a great, you know, when you think Dwight Eisenhower and Ronald Reagan and everybody, uh, we have the most votes by far. So that's something to me that's very exciting. Uh, and overall, it's just been a very exciting pro process. I think we're going to do very well. Uh, we have no idea what's going to happen on the Democrat side, but they're certainly having difficulty. I don't like to see people having difficulty, but anybody has to have it. Let it be them. And uh, I think it's going to be very interesting, but I'm very proud to say that we've gotten the most votes. And also, uh, if you look at the overall primary, the amount of votes cast, that's also a record. So uh, we've broken a lot of records in terms of the voters. Uh, our polling has come out, and the polls are doing very well, as you know. We're pretty much even and, in some cases, ahead of Hillary. And I think we're going to have a very, very successful number of months. And I think it will all culminate in November, and uh, we're going to make America great again, okay? Yes. So uh, that's the way it is. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm glad you asked the question because I have to tell you, I have raised a tremendous amount of money for the vets, almost six million dollars, and more money is going to come in, I believe, over the next little while too. But I've raised almost six million dollars. All of the money has been paid out, and I'm going to give it to you in a second. In fact, I brought a list just in case that question was asked. But the money has been paid out. I have been thanked by so many veterans groups throughout the United States. One gentleman called me up recently crying that out of the blue he got a check for $100,000. But I have been thanked by so many groups, great veterans groups. And by the way, outside you have a few people, they're picketing. They're sent there by Hillary Clinton, and they're picketing that uh, the, the money wasn't sent. The money's all been sent. I wanted to keep it private. If we could, I wanted to keep it private, uh, because I don't think it's anybody's business if I want to send money to the vets. But I have to say this. I raised close to $6 million. It'll probably be over that amount uh, when it's all said and done. But as of this moment, it's $5.6 million. When it started, this started with a speech in Iowa when I said, let's raise some money for the vets. And it went up from a $1 million to $2 million to $3 million. And it now ends up to be almost $6 million. And again, I think we can even do better than that. Uh, but I will say that the press should be ashamed of themselves. And on behalf of the vets, the press should be ashamed of themselves. They are calling me, and they are furious, because I sent people checks of a lot of money, and I'm going to give you the names right now, which is what you want. And instead of being like, thank you very much, Mr. Trump, or Trump did a good job, everyone say, who got it, who got it, who got it? and you make me look very bad. I have never received such bad publicity for doing such a good job. So I will give you the names, if that's what you want, right? Okay, are you ready? I brought them here. It takes because you have to vet each company. You know, much of this money was paid out very early. But you have to vet all of these uh, different groups, because these are many different groups. You have to go through a process. When you send checks for hundreds of thousands of dollars, 
to people and to companies and to groups that you've never heard of, charitable organizations. You have to vet it. You send people out. You do a lot of work. Now, most of the money went out quite a while ago. Some of it went out more recently. But all of this has gone out, and I'll give you the names. Are you ready? Do you have your pad? And again, I, I really think the press — look, the media — you know my opinion of the media. It's very low. I think the media is, frankly, uh, made up of people that, in many cases, not in all cases, uh, are not good people. But I think this is an example. And I just — on behalf of all of the folks that have worked hard on this and all of the people that have made contributions, including myself, I gave a million dollars. But I just want to tell you that there are so many people that are so thankful for what we did. One other thing that's important to know, it's zero dollars have been taken out for administration. You know, when you go to a lot of these different groups, in this case, zero dollars have been taken out for administration. So a lot of these companies, they make a lot of money with doing the administration stuff. So no money. It costs zero dollars to accumulate all of this money, okay? So you have 22 kill, and that's $200,000. Now, you can call these people. That was another thing. A lot of the money, when it was sent out, different people would call. Uh, I could tell you — I'm not going to mention anybody specifically, but there are a couple of people that were really disgusting. They'd call. And these vet groups, they don't get a lot of calls from the press. And maybe some of them would keep quiet, or they didn't know, or they didn't want to talk to the press, or they didn't feel comfortable. So if they didn't say they got the money, which they all did, 100 percent got the money, all certified checks, if anyone wants to see the certified checks. But rather than saying, why don't you — could I see a certified check? They said, well, they didn't say they got the money. They all got the money. But they're not people that always talk to the press. Many of them do talk to the press. Many of them have — I guess you found $2 million or $2.5 million with their talk. Well, the number is 5.6 million, and it's going to possibly go above that because I believe some other people are coming in. Ready? 22 kill got $200,000. Now, these are checks that have been delivered, that have been cashed, that are now being used to help the vets. Achilles International, great organization, $200,000. Much of this money was paid a long time ago. American Hero Adventures, $100,000. Americans for Equal Living, $100,000. America's Vet Dogs, the Veteran Canine Corps, Inc., $75,000. AmVets, $75,000. Just so you understand. When I didn't do the Fox debate, the one Fox debate, because I didn't think they treated me right, but actually they've been extremely fair over the last three or four months. I have to say that about Fox. But when I didn't do that one event, the debate, I gave a speech. I didn't have to do this with the money for the vets, but I decided to because I thought it would be a good idea. And I had some very generous people. Carl Icahn gave a half a million dollars. Phil Ruffin gave a million. Stuart Raw gave a million. Ike Perlmutter gave a million. We raised a lot of money, and I didn't have to do that. It would have been easier just to give the speech. And the problem with the press, what they do, is they convince people like me not to do it, not to give money to different things, because it's a lot easier, actually, that way. Armed Services, YMCA of the United States, $75,000. Bob Woodruff Family Foundation, Inc., they do a good job, $75,000. Central Iowa Shelter and Services, these are all vet-related, $100,000. Connected Warriors, Inc., $75,000. Disabled American Veterans Charitable Service Trust, $115,000. Fisher House Foundation, great people, $115,000. Folds of Honor Foundation, $200,000. Foundation for American Veterans, $75,000. Freedom Alliance, $75,000. Green Beret Foundation, $350,000. Hire Heroes USA, $75,000. Homes for Our Troops, $50,000. And just so you understand, we've got a long way to go. 
This money was raised during a little speech that I made, rather than doing a debate. The one debate I missed. It was the lowest rated debate, by the way, but I won't say that. Honoring America's warriors, $100,000. Hope for the warriors, $65,000. Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund, $175,000. K-9s for Warriors, $50,000. Liberty House, $100,000. Marine Corps Law Enforcement Foundation, $1,100,000. I gave a million dollars to them. They're a great group. Navy SEAL Foundation, $465,000. Navy Marine Corps Relief Society, $75,000. New England Wounded Veterans, Inc., $75,000. Operation Homefront, $65,000. Partners for Patriots, $100,000. Project for Patriots, and we're still vetting them, by the way, the check is ready to go, but they don't have all of their appropriate effect we have down here. will be released to them upon the receipt of the IRS determination letter. It's the only one, which we hear they're fantastic, but uh, they have to give us that final document. This is what I mean by vetting. You have to have all the documents, otherwise you can't give them the money. Project for Patriots, $100,000. Puppy Jake Foundation, $100,000. Racing for Heroes, Inc., $200,000. Support Siouxland Soldiers, $100,000. Task Force Dagger Foundation, $50,000. The Mission Continues, $75,000. The National Military Family Association, Inc., $75,000. Veterans Airlift Command, $100,000. Veterans Count, $25,000. Veterans in Command, Inc., $150,000. Vietnam Veterans Workshop, Inc., $75,000. Warriors for Freedom Foundation, $50,000. And I believe we're going to have some more coming in, some friends of mine, some more coming in. And that adds up to $6 million well, let's see. That adds up to $5,600,000 total. And we're going to have some more coming in. So that's it. Now, thank you. Thank you. Every one of those checks has been passed, other than the one check, which is uh, being held subject to their getting a final approval from the government. Uh, but every one of those checks has been passed. This is my check for a million dollars. We have many letters from the different groups thanking us very much for the money. And they didn't ask, and I didn't ask people to be here today. I could have asked every one of the groups, unlike Hillary, who asked people to stand outside and say, oh, Donald Trump didn't give the money. Nobody gave this kind of money. So I gave $5,600,000. More is coming in, probably tops the $6 million number. I never thought we were going to raise a million dollars when we started. And we end up doing uh, five, almost $6 million. So I have to tell you, the press is so dishonest and so unfair. A lot of the people behind me and some of the people over here helped in vetting the various requests for money. And I just want to thank all of those people. Yes? I wasn't too involved in picking the organizations, other than I gave a million dollars to the Marine, to the law enforcement Marine. They are fabulous people. They honored me last year at the Waldorf Astoria. I knew them. I was going to give it to three companies or three groups, and we couldn't vet them quickly. And so I gave it to the Marine. And if you look at that number, uh, the Marine Corps Law Enforcement Foundation has, is a fabulous group. And I didn't have to go through a big vetting process with them because I was going to split the million-dollar check up among three or four different groups. 
And in the end, I just didn't want to go through the process of having to vet all those different groups. Because I wanted to make this out of the goodness of my heart. I didn't want to do this where the press is all involved. And all of a sudden, everybody's going, where did it go? Who did it go to? Then we said who it went to. Then we said, how much was it? Uh, uh, we gave, look, when this started, I think you were there. I said, if we could raise a million dollars, that would be good. And we ended up raising almost six million. And I'm going to have more coming in over a period of time. So you think you should be accountable? Oh, I'm totally accountable. But I didn't want to have credit for it. Now, actually, though, what I got was worse than credit because they were questioning me. And this is money. And by the way, most of that money went out very early, just so you understand. But a lot of these groups getting vetted by, you know, when you pay the money out, they need government documentation. They need a lot of different things. Plus, we want to find out, is it a good group? I had people, teams of people, reviewing statistics, reviewing numbers, and also talking to people in the military to find out whether or not the group was deserving of the money. We have given to groups that are unbelievable groups. And honestly, I wish you could hear the phone calls and see the letters. They are so happy. And I'm happy to do it. I didn't want the credit for it, but it was very unfair that the press treated us so badly. Oh, go ahead. Well, generally speaking, that's 100 percent true. Go ahead. I like scrutiny, but you know what? When I raise money, excuse me, excuse me, I've watched you on television. You're a real beauty. Uh, when I raise money for the veterans, and it's a massive amount of money, find out how much Hillary Clinton's given to the veterans, nothing. And then I see a few guys standing out there. They don't even know what they're there for. They, don't, they have no idea. They're there because Hillary Clinton's campaign sent them. And actually, I think it was you or one of you that found out that they actually were with Hillary Clinton's campaign, which was interesting, but I wasn't surprised. I don't, I don't want the credit for it, but I shouldn't be lambasted. And remember this. So out of the almost $6 million that was raised, not one penny did I take for administration costs. That's unheard of. Okay. How else am I going to raise the money? Sorry? How else am I going to raise the money? Sure. Sure. I would have given I would have given this out, just so you understand, until I was criticized. So I took I'm the only one in the world could raise almost six million dollars for the veterans, have uniform applause by the veterans groups, and end up being criticized by the press. Yes, I made a speech, and during my speech I said, let's raise a little money for the vets. It turned out to be a lot of money, not a little money. I thought if we could get to a million dollars, it would be great, which it would have been. That's right. That's right. I do raise millions. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. No, I raised almost $6 million. Some of it didn't come through, but more money is coming through than didn't come through. The number probably is going to be, when we finish it, probably going to be over the $6 million. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I don't mind it coming from the opposition, though, Carl. What I do mind is when I raise all of these millions, and when we started out, nobody ever thought it was going to be over five million or close to six. All right. So look, here's the story. Here's the story. I think, and, and I've been dealing with the press a long time. I think the political press is among the most dishonest people that I've ever met. I have to tell you that. Okay. Of course, you're excluded, Carl. But I think the political press. Huh? You're in the middle. I think the political press, I see the stories, and I see the way they're couched. For instance, I went down this weekend to do Rolling Thunder. I was invited. I didn't have anything to do with it. We had a tremendous gathering of people, thousands, I don't know how many, but many thousands of people. And I joked, oh, I thought we were going to go from the Jefferson Memorial to the link. I was joking. They said Donald Trump was disappointed. Everybody knew I was being sarcastic and joking. They said some of them. He said, Donald Trump was 
uh, very disappointed that it didn't go from Jefferson to Lincoln. You know, millions of people. I was joking. I said, oh, I'm used to watching it. We have. I was joking. So they put it down as serious. They know I was joking. I'll give you another example. We had a certain, the same event. It was roped off where you could only get so many people there. And there were a lot of people. I don't know, 10,000, 15, maybe 25,000. I don't know. It was a lot of people. Plus, there were people breaking the seams all the way along. Uh, Gene Washington, a man I like, actually, wrote an article like there was 5,000 people there. There were many times that. And you weren't allowed to have any more people. And all of these people were with their motorcycles in parking lots all the way. They're waving to me as I'm going by. But wait a minute. The point is, law enforcement, these people, didn't allow you to have any more people. I think the press knew that. I had a tremendous crowd, but it was the biggest crowd you could have had because it was all cordoned off. You weren't allowed to have any more. They weren't allowed to have any more people than they had. So instead of saying Trump made a speech in front of a packed crowd, they said Trump was disappointed because I didn't have millions of people going from Jefferson to Washington. I mean, give me a break. It's just, honestly, it's dishonest reporting. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, go. Well, the veterans believe me. Let me tell you the veterans, why they believe. And, and I have one group was here that I gave. Is Al Baldessero here? Maybe you want to say, this is a group I gave money to. Now, I could have asked all these groups. He just showed up. I just saw him. But I could have asked all these groups to come here, and they could have made, I didn't want to do that. I'm not looking for credit. But what I don't want is when I raise millions of dollars, have people say, like this sleazy guy right over here from ABC. He's a sleaze in my book. You're a sleaze because you, don't, you know the facts, and you know the facts well. Go ahead. You might say something. Thank you, uh, Mr. Trump. First of all, for the record, uh, I'm a uh, state representative from New Hampshire, 10 years on the Veterans Affairs Committee, 22 years in the Marine Corps, retired first sergeant. Uh, what I want to clarify here, first of all, I would never ever in a million years put my name on a candidate that did not, from his heart, look me in the eye and tell me he's concerned about veterans. That's Donald Trump. I met him over a year ago. I've been involved with many fundraisers. There are many scam artists out there. He did the right thing by venting these groups there. If you look at some of the groups, they're giving 20 cents, 40 cents on a dollar, and they're spending the rest for, you know, their, you know, nice, lavish trips. He gave 100%. The liberal media is the only ones that have been calling me on the foundation. All right? I'm the former chairman. I've been dealing with this stuff for years as a veterans activist. Stop using veterans as liberal, as uh, political pawns. you got a guy outside, McCoy. Go do a Google search on his uh, Facebook. He's out there. His pictures with Clinton. They are using veterans as political pawns. It must stop. Donald Trump is doing this for the heart. You're all focused on the way he's raising money, and you're not looking at the 22 veterans that are killing each other every day. You're not concerned about the thousands of veterans that are on wait lists. Look at his plan on his Trump's website. He talks about medical cards. He talks about fixing the VA. He talks about competition. I think the liberal media, and I've been dealing with you a long time, you need to get your head out of your butt, focus on the real issues. Thank you. What I did is, I didn't ask Al. I've gotten to know Al a little bit, primarily through New Hampshire, where we had great victories. But uh, he showed up this morning because he was upset. And many of the other groups are very upset. They received 100000 in the mail. They didn't even know what it was for. It was from me. Other groups received 200, 250, uh, 250000 They didn't know what it was for. And I have, again, upstairs, I have received phone calls with people crying. I have received letters, heartfelt letters. And, you know, it's uh, — it really the, — the bad part about the dishonesty of the media is that people like me will be inclined not to do it anymore. Because why should you raise uh, 5.6 million — and I think I'll go over 6 million pretty easily. Nobody said that we started this out as a small little project where it was less than a million dollars because it just kept mushrooming and building and building it. But nobody talks about that. So we raised um, 5.6 million. We have so many happy groups, uh, so many happy veterans. And then I see these guys, these Hillary Clinton people outside. Now, of course, they don't know the extent. They probably figured, based on reading the press, that Trump didn't make, you know, didn't raise this kind of money. Uh, 
but we raised a lot. And I'll be raising more, and we'll be sending it to other people as we get along. It's a complicated process, yeah. No, it doesn't. It just, it really, you know, the government sort of approves different groups for a lot of reasons. And so it really does. And more than anything else, it's also speaking to other veterans. We have a circle of veterans. And who's good for it? I don't want to send a $250,000 check to a group that doesn't do good work. So it's called vetting. We vet the vets, but it's called vetting. No, I think that it's bothersome because I love the vets, and I've worked hard for the vets. And as you can see, I've given a lot of money and raised a lot of money for the vets. And I think when the press portrays it differently, the press is being very dishonest. So I don't like that. I don't like dishonesty. Not you. Go ahead. Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions is a fantastic man. Jeff Sessions is one of the most highly respected people in the United States Senate. Jeff Sessions is a person that I believe that Ted Cruz just has the most respect for. And I think Ted thought that he would get an endorsement. You know, Jeff Sessions has never endorsed a presidential candidate before, as many years as he's been in the Senate. So, you know, I, I, Jeff Sessions certainly is somebody that I would consider, absolutely. He's a fantastic person. Yeah, go ahead. I, I think it's a very tough call. It, it was amazing because there were moments with the gorilla, the way he held that child, it was almost like a mother holding a baby. It looked so beautiful and calm. And there were moments where it looked pretty dangerous. I don't think they had a choice. I mean, probably they didn't have a choice. You have a child, a young child is at stake. And, uh, you know, it's too bad there wasn't another way. I, I thought it was so beautiful to watch that, you know, powerful, almost 500-pound gorilla, the way he dealt with that little boy. But it just takes one second. It's one second. It's not like it takes place over, well, he's going to do it in 30 seconds from now. It just takes one little flick of his finger. And I will tell you, they probably had no choice. Go ahead. Uh, I'm in favor of fixing the VA health care. VA is one of the great catastrophes in this country, what's going on. You look at what's happening in Phoenix and different places throughout the country where they're catching people stealing and they don't even fire them, where people are waiting five days, six days, seven days online. They're dying while they wait online. Uh, and I am in favor of if they can't get to a doctor within a reasonable period of time, they're going to go see a doctor and the country's going to pay for it. They're going to go to a private doctor or a public hospital or public doctor, but someplace that can take care of them immediately. We're losing thousands of people waiting online. And the Veterans Administration is run by Obama just as incompetently as he's running our country. You look at the TSA, you look at what's going on at the airports. And you look at that, okay? Just take a look at that. That's like the Veterans Administration. Nothing in our country works anymore. It's a mess. And maybe that's why I'm doing so well in the polls. Yes. No, it doesn't have to be privatization. No, it doesn't have to be privatization. What it has to be is when somebody's online and they say it's a seven-day wait, that person's going to walk over to a, across the street to a private doctor, be taken care of. We're going to pay the bill. And by the way, that's going to be a lot less expensive. And we'll check it out and be careful. But that's going to be a lot less expensive than what's going on. These people are living in hell. And Hillary Clinton said the Veterans Administration is working just fine. And the head of it, McDonald, said last week that Waiting on line's not bad. Look at Disney World, okay? These are the kind of people we have running things. It's ridiculous. Dave? Um, there's a Rasmussen poll out today that said that half of Americans think Hillary Clinton should stay in the race, even if she's tried to sell it. Does that suggest that you're continuing to pound her and see, I don't know if she can even run, I don't know if she should run? Are you yeah. No, David, I tell you what, that's their choice. You have a, a party called the Democrats. And they're going to have to make that choice. Uh, it's, you know, I think it's probably going to be her, her because it's rigged. 
And I think if you people will say, I'm the one that came up with the term rigged, I used it for myself, except I won by such big margins that the fact that it, the, the whole system is rigged on both sides. Same with the Republicans, just less obvious. The Democrats with the, with the super, you know, with the whole super delegate thing, it's ridiculous. So, so I think that they're going to have to make that determination. You if you're asking me who I'd prefer running against, do you, do you think she committed I think what she did was very bad. And I think a lot of people have done a lot less than her, and their lives have been destroyed. Oh, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Hold it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wait. Judge has been very unfair, has not done a good job. He's been a very bad judge. He's been very unfair. And I will win the Trump University case. I already am, as far as I'm concerned. But I will win the Trump University case. This is because I don't care. Because you know what? Why antagonist? Because I don't care. I have a judge who's very, very unfair. And it's, well, I'll, you'll see it in court documents. But I have a judge who's very, very unfair. He knows he's unfair. And I'll win the Trump University case. I could settle that case. I could have settled it. I just choose not to. In fact, when I ran, they said, why didn't you settle up that case? I don't want to settle up the case. Because you know what? Because I'm a man of principle. And most of the people that took those courses have letters saying they thought it was great, essentially. It was good. It was great. And you know what? When they're on the stand and you say, how come you signed a letter saying that Trump University was so good? How come you signed a letter? The woman that was the original plaintiff in the case they went to the court, and the judge allowed her to get out of the case. The case should have been dropped. The whole case should have been dropped. They wanted her dismissed from the case. You know why? Because she was deposed. She was such a bad witness that we win the case easily. She signed a letter, and she's on film. She's on tape, like these cameras, saying unbelievably good things about Trump University. So they didn't want her anymore because she's a disaster for them. So they went to the judge, and they said, Your Honor, We'd like to have her not be a participant, not be the plaintiff in the case. And he said, oh, that's OK. She's the one that started the case. Now, they don't even want her to testify. They don't want her to testify because she's a disaster. She has all sorts of beautiful statements about it. And importantly, she's on tape saying how great it is. They don't want her. I wouldn't want her either. Now, I could have settled that case. I could settle that case. I can settle that case. I don't want to. I'll go through the process. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Because we're down the line. Because we're down the line, and the fact that is you can't win as an independent. You, for the most part, you can't even get on Texas and various other states now. It's too late. But Texas is out. So but here's what happens. What happens is you will not have, and very importantly, you will not have Supreme Court justices. You're going to lose. You could have as many as four or five. That's over. Now. Crystal's the one that's, he's the last one. Don't forget, he said Trump will never run. You know, the guy's not a smart person. He said, Donald Trump will never run. Remember? Do you remember? I actually blame you. Why do you put this guy on television? I see him on the different shows. He's got no credibility. He said, I won't run. If I run, I won't do well. If I do well, it's this and that. He looks like such a fool. I saw him on one show, he's practically crying because he can't justify it. Now he comes out with a tweet over the weekend, over Memorial Day weekend, it sounds like he's going to put somebody up. Even I thought it. I thought, oh, they're going to find some indie. Now he comes out with something saying he was almost, almost kidding. OK? Let me tell you. Uh, these people are losers. He's trying to, trying to make you, he's trying to drive you guys a little bit nuts. If they do an indie, assuming it's decent, which I don't think anybody with a reputation would do it, because they'd look like fools. But what you're going to do is you lose the election for the Republicans, and therefore you lose the Supreme Court. Therefore, you will have a group of people put on the Supreme Court where this country will never, ever recover. It will never, ever be the same. No, no, I'm saying, no, I didn't say that. I said Bill Crystal is a loser. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll tell you why, Carl. He has called every single move. Take a look on me. He's going to lose this state. I went in a landslide. Wait a minute, Carl. I didn't say everybody. Many, but I didn't say everybody. Okay, wait, wait, wait. 
Bill Crystal's a loser. His magazine is failing, as you know. It's going to be down. I don't, I don't think it even survives. He's getting some free publicity. But Bill Crystal, I've been watching this for two years. Trump isn't going to run. Then I go into a race. We go into New Hampshire. Oh, he's not going to win New Hampshire. Win in a landslide. I go every place I went, I was not going to win. But I win in a landslide. Do you think maybe he doesn't like me? OK, how about one or two more? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Essentially, he said today that you have to stop beating up on Republicans. And he and goes on to say that you've essentially got some 30% of the Republican vote. It's wrong. It's wrong. Carl, I didn't get 30%. Right. Well, the that you can have that. My last one was 78%. I didn't get 30%. Is he going to make it more difficult? I don't know. To unite the party no. when you are no. criticizing your critics for no. winning? Here's the way I look at it. When I have somebody that's not on my side, Okay? When then, you know, there are, by the way, I've gotten great applause from the press and, you know, in terms of as an achievement because the Republican Party is really well unified. We have come up, people that you would have never thought possible are now saying, I support Trump. So remember that. We don't talk about that too much. But actually, last week, the big story is how fast the Republican Party is healing. Because it is a healing process. It was a rough, that was a rough campaign. I don't know, Fred Malik. I can say this. The real story is how fast we're getting together. Now, if I have a Republican that's not on my side, I, I, I'm not going to — why should I be particularly nice to that person? I'm not going to go after her like I would Hillary or Crazy Bernie. But you know what? Why should I be nice to that person? If I have a person that's not going to support me, I have no obligation. Now, politically, I may be right, I may be wrong, but that's who I am. I'm a very honest person, Carl. If somebody is going to say a little bit negative or a lot negative about me, and if they happen to be a Republican, I may choose to hit them back. Not always. Not always. But I may choose to hit them back. What? I'm not a fan of Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney lost an election that he should have won. And if you read the front page of the Wall Street Journal about Mitt Romney, he looks like a fool. Look, I'm not a fan of Mitt Romney, just so you understand. I raised a lot of money for Mitt Romney. I made robocalls for him, made speeches for him. He let us down. If you read the front page of the Wall Street Journal this weekend, Mitt Romney looks like a fool. Now, why would I say good about Mitt Romney? Uh, she was not nice, and I was fine, just a little bit of a jab. But she wasn't nice, and you think I'm going to change? I'm not changing, including with her. Go ahead, one more, one more question. Bob Dole is a fan of mine. Bob Dole endorsed me, so don't tell me about Bob Dole. Well, look, Gary Johnson got one percent of the vote last time. I watched that whole situation; it was really pretty disgraceful. I think it's a total fringe deal. I think he's a fringe candidate. You want to know the truth? I look at him and I watch him and I watch his motions and I watch what he says. I think that he is a fringe candidate, and your second, you know, weld is — when you do a little research on that, I think it's not going to be a factor, okay? Mr. Yeah. No, no, not all of you, just many of you. <laughs> not you, David, actually. Is, is this what it's going to be like? Yeah, it is. President? Yeah, it is. Let, let me tell you something. I'm a, I'm a person — okay, yeah, it is going to be like this, David. If the press writes false stories, like they did with this, because, you know, pro half of you are amazed that I raised all of this money. If the press writes false stories, like they did where I wanted to keep a low profile, I didn't want the credit for raising all this money for the vets. I wasn't looking for the credit. And by the way, more money is coming in. I wasn't looking for the credit. But I had no choice but to do this because the press was saying I didn't raise any money for them. Not only did I raise it, much of it was given a long time ago. And there is a vetting process, and I think you understand that. But when I raise almost $6 million, and probably in the end we'll raise more than six, because more is going to come in and is coming in. But when I raise $5.6 million as of today, more is coming in. And I and, — and this is going to phenomenal groups, and I have many of these people vetting the people that are getting the money and working hard. And then we have to read Story, probably libelous stories, or certainly close, in the newspapers. And the people know the stories are false. 
I'm going to continue to attack the press. Look, I find the press to be extremely dishonest. I find the political press to be unbelievably dishonest. I will say that. Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.